Since the change of the guard around 2018, the fourth generation of K-pop has started to look crazier each month. With scores of artists saturating the market from both big three companies, Hybe, and also middle players, the landscape is becoming treacherous, and numbers are at an all-time high. One of, if not the main player that is currently the face of fourth generation girl groups right now, is Espa. With their careers just over a year and a half old at this stage, Espa have become the epitome of the term monster rookies, and as they approach their second mini-album titled Girls, their ceiling just seems to be rising astronomically higher. So is Espa K-pop's future? Let's talk about it. In today's video at least, I'll make my case for the assertion that Espa is in fact K-pop's future, and want to reiterate that this is purely just a matter of opinion. In addition to this, as the scope of this topic is already extremely broad in nature, I'll only be focusing on Espa within the context of girl groups, and not the entire industry in general. Now of course, naturally people will agree and disagree both on some of the points that I will make, and disagreement is okay, and constructive discussion is always welcomed. But disrespect and hate won't be tolerated towards anyone in the comments or any artists, so don't bother. Now as is the same with everything, in order to make a claim like this, we need evidence. Let's first take a look at Esper's resume. Now, numbers don't mean everything, and they aren't the be-all and end-all of an artist's career these days. Success, as a concept, is something which is subjective and varies on context and who you're asking, so this is something to keep in mind. That being said, however, statistics and numbers give an excellent idea of how well an artist is performing compared to a standard, and thus this section will show us where Esper sit on that scale. First, we have music show wins. Over the course of the last few years, whilst music shows are still something to be celebrated and are by far one of the most conventionally and widely accepted forms of recognition in the industry, the idea that music show wins equate directly to the longevity of an artist's success has largely fallen off. As K-pop reaches deeper into distant corners of the world, and the international fan base bring their own benefits for companies, this is also a reflection of how K-pop is evolving. Since their debut in November of 2020, Esper has accumulated 9 music show wins in total, and have become frequent visitors to the top of the charts. In 2021, Esper broke the record for the highest selling debut album by a rookie girl group in history, and also became the 4th highest first week sales of any girl group, selling over 276,000 copies of their album Savage. This record would be bested by none other than Hybe's brand new girl group The Seraphim, who sold just over 300,000 copies of their debut album Fearless just 6 months later. It's important to note here that the criteria referenced here is debut album. Esper debuted with a single, but Savage was their first album be it mini, full, or single album, making it their first, or debut, album. Whilst Savage swept across the K-pop world, Esper secured gigs like the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade in New York towards the end of 2021, Coachella in early 2022, with them being amongst just a handful of K-pop artists to have performed at the event so far, and as we move further into 2022, Esper's second mini-album Girls has dropped, and the numbers are simply staggering. Completely obliterating the glass ceiling between girl groups and boy groups in the industry, Esper has marked a record 1.6 million pre-orders of their new album, making it the 8th most pre-ordered album in history by any artist. Among this list, the group sits up with names like NCT, BTS, Seventeen, TXT, and Stray Kids, some of the highest selling and most popular artists in K-pop at the moment. Now not only is this number big, but also is the precedent that it sets. Espa are currently the only girl group within the top 20 of this list, and the only 4th generation female artist at that. Having sold over 800,000 copies of Girls on the first day of its release, Espa have not only become the highest selling female group of all time for first day sales, but also the highest selling for first week sales as well. Thus far, the group has no problem charting domestically and internationally, and the purchasing power of the fanbase is at heights which are beyond that of any other fourth generation group for now. Whilst numbers certainly are not the most important factor in determining a group's worth or value as these are completely subjective, it's clear that Esper are leading a new wave of fourth generation girl groups. In their first full year on the K-pop scene, Esper bagged 9 wins, over 20 awards including countless Rookie of the Year awards, and set new records, pointing to where K-pop would be heading in the next few years. Sales aside, one thing which has dramatically impacted the way in which Esper have not only become more successful, but also continue to further the reach of K-pop, is the SM cultural universe. Now as far as lore is concerned, it's certainly not new. K-pop groups and the idea of storytelling are almost inseparable, and have been paired together for the longest time. Without storytelling or concepts, the narratives that certain groups are built around would be weak and hollow, 
and one of K-pop's defining characteristics would be missing. Here though, the difference lies in the sheer scale of this operation. In the past few years, SM Entertainment has gone to incredible lengths to create Esper's own version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not just where they reside, but one that all SM artists are linked to. With Esper's story through the fictional world of Kwangya being one of the most captivating, SM have poured millions into weaving this into Esper's music and promotions, and these can be seen through their SMCU films released thus far. In addition to this, beyond stories that are too difficult to understand, Esper's Black Mamba arc is one centred on the defeat of the Black Mamba, a personification of Esper's inner demons, and also people who attempt to hold them back. With an overarching and highly relatable message, which encourages listeners to realise their value and break free from the shackles and illusions that their personal demons and others show them, Esper's music and message is deeper than many think. So why is this so important to the future of K-pop then? Well, to put it simply, the market is tough, and to stand out as you always have, you need to do something unique. As the K-pop industry approaches one of the most competitive periods for female groups in the genre's history since the second generation, beyond the music and the idols, companies are starting to adapt in the way of selling concepts, stories, or lore. This isn't the first time that lore has been used as the centerpiece of a group, as Luna, for example, was established with their own universe also, but the sheer scale at which this operation is being carried out by SM is incredible. In addition to this, it should also be noted that SM do have experience in lore crafting as well, and have done so through their boy group EXO in the past. It's not yet clear exactly what impact this has numerically on Esper's reach and popularity, but one thing's for sure, and that is that the concept of world building is becoming more popular in K-pop, in an effort by companies to have listeners further deeply entrenched in their artists. Beyond just music and their idols, SM are also selling people on Esper's universe. Now is this all just simply Big 3 privilege? Well, yes, but also no. It's no doubt that with debuting under certain companies such as SM, YG, or JYP, certain artists will start off with a significant base behind them, making the quote-unquote road to success a lot shorter. That being said though, just because an artist debuts under a big company, it doesn't mean that they don't make good music or don't work hard, and it certainly doesn't necessarily mean that they will also be an instant hit. So far, SM's promotion of Esper has played a big role in their success, and this doesn't come down to simply privilege, but rather just good management decisions, strategy, and timing. Debuting with a single like Black Mamba, Esper's debut was almost like an entree, a taste for what was to come for both fans and the industry. Black Mamba took 51 days to hit 100 million views on YouTube, one of the fastest for a fourth generation group, and it had not only fans of the group, but the industry watching closely. Releasing Forever soon after Black Mamba, then followed by Next Level, Espa took off. With a heavy emphasis on experimental and industrial flavours, coupled by jarring beat changes, Espa began to represent the culmination of years of SM's leaps in production prior to their debut, as well as the company's confidence to push the envelope even further. Espa in this sense became a living, breathing representation of SM, past, present, and also future. Securing overseas schedules such as the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade and Coachella so early in their careers, the strategy to boost Esper prior to their release of Savage, and also even their production decisions behind Next Level. It's clear that either SM know the market better than anyone, have an influence on said market to a scary extent, or both. Naturally this isn't perfect though, and whilst improvements could be made to promotions in terms of increasing the output of reality and variety contents for fans and the general public to fall deeper into the group, SM are clearly doing something right, and Esper's music, the members themselves, and also their concept is resonating with people. With their domestic and international popularity at sky-high levels signified by their charting behaviours, and the explosive comeback numbers for their new release Girls, Esper's trajectory is looking steeper than many would have expected, and arguably steeper than any other fourth generation group. As for the question as to whether or not Esper is the future of K-pop, the answer is yes, but it's not the only one. As the industry has evolved, companies' focuses have pivoted, and groups have changed since K-pop's reach into the international sphere, K-pop has become arguably as competitive as it was for girl groups during girls' generation's peak in the second generation. With such a prospect no longer lying over the horizon but right in front of us, we see a dynamic where current giants either maintain themselves or wind down their activities completely, contrasted against rookie groups and fourth generation artists setting the bar higher almost every month. Whilst Esper will undoubtedly go down as one of the most successful K-pop girl groups in history, 
Not far behind them lay some of K-pop's biggest girl groups, and they'll all inevitably rise together. For now though, as we continue to see the girl group landscape change faster by the day, there's no doubt that Espa have become prolific, and instead of breaking standards and records, at this point, they're almost transcending them completely. The future of this genre is impossible to predict, but some things remain certain. Fourth generation girl groups have pushed K-pop to places that were previously considered impossible, and sitting in the conductor's seat of that train is Espa.